So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. God bless you, Pastor David Trainum, coming into your heart, your life, your car, your home, wherever you're listening to this broadcast at, thanking you for tuning in. In a couple of seconds, we're going to be uh, continuing in the series that I started that uh, I entitled Keys to Life. And to the, today, we're going to talk about celebrating who you are, celebrating who you are. And I believe that it's important for us to come to grips with who God created us to be. And it doesn't mean that if there are flaws in our character, when we compare it to the moral compass that we uh, talk about, you know, the word of God, it doesn't mean that if uh, uh, that if we have flaws in our character that we just hold to them. You know, we allow God to consistently work on those areas with the intent of overcoming those areas and not letting negatives influence our lives anymore. Okay, and so uh, as we get into the word of God today, we're going to talk about celebrating who you are, because you must never view your life as being negative. No matter what the situation is that you were raised in or what you may be facing, no matter what somebody may have told you in the past, the present, or what you set up in your mind that somebody's going to tell you in the future. Or no matter what was done to you to hold you back, those words that people would use, the, the, uh, the, the bosses on the job that kind of held you back when you knew that you had greater potential to be more and have the promotions on the job that you needed. We had people try to hold you back. They held you back with your words. They would say that you would never do this. You would never do that. Don't even try it. You're black. You're white. You're fat. You're skinny. You're not smart enough. You didn't get enough education. And I do believe that we need to work on our lives, especially when it comes to education because there's some things that we cannot change. We cannot change the color of our skin. We cannot change the education that we had unless we begin to get more education. And so we don't allow people what they tell us to dictate how far we're going to go in life because you are your own person and God has instilled in you what is needed to be a success in his eyes and not so much in the eyes of the world. You see, when this world is over, when your life is over in this world, in this earth, you see, we're, we're going to stand before God. We're not going to stand before the world. And at that point, we're going to be judged by God, not by the world. And so we must understand that we're all created differently. And being, and being a different person than everybody else, we must celebrate our differences. And this is true with your nationality, your religious belief, as I said, the color of your skin or the level of your education. But it's also true when it comes to the vision you have for your life. You ever notice that a lot of times people try to get you to live out the vision that they have? for their lives, you know, and this happens all the time. And it happens on every level of society. It happens when you are, you know, uh, growing up one-on-one -on -one with your friends or your classmates. It happens in the church as everybody's trying to get us to buy into the vision that they have. And my thing is this, if you have no vision for your life, you're going to spend countless days, weeks, months, and even years following somebody else's vision. And I'm not saying that you are not supposed to. I'm not saying that they're not there, but they are not to have the preeminent voice when it comes to your life. Because what you are called to is most likely different than what other people are called to. And being so, you are not to compete against them or put them down because their vision is different. Even when it comes to being pastors of churches, because as you know, I'm a pastor and I've been pastoring since 1990. The reality is this, the moment I became David Trainum is the moment that I became most effective. I got, to, I, I, I stopped 
being like the Fred Prices and the Ken Copelands and the Jerry Savelles and the Robert Capps and, and you name the others within your own denomination that were there. Those are the people that influenced my life in the beginning. And I, I admired them so much that I tried to be like them. I tried to teach like them. And I, I tried to live in the way that they lived only to find out that I was causing frustration because that's not what God called me to. And so when I became comfortable with who I was, I realized that I was not to compete against them. I was not to try to be like them. And neither was I called to put them down because their vision is different. And again, that's in every level. I use the, you know, uh, the pastors and preachers as an example, but that is true in every level. Because life is never a competition against others. It's about becoming better today than you were yesterday. And then better tomorrow than you are today. And being better consists of incremental steps that inspire you to treat people better. And when you are better, you look at things more objectively without being controversial. You hold on to the morals and the values that make you who you are and make you a better person as you're being conformed into the image of Jesus while you forsake behaviors and habits that hold you back and are detrimental to your life and those who are around you. And going through this entire process opens opportunities for you, your family and others, you know, because this process awaits everyone who wants to make their lives better. And in the end, the world benefits from your blood, your sweat, and your tears. And again, these are made possible because somebody supported you, as we saw last week. Somebody inspired you. Remember, we are interdependent. And they encourage you to be more and do more. And these family members, these friends, these colleagues, and these mentors, they're more valuable to you than silver or gold, even though we may not realize it at the moment. And the question is often asked, why me? God, why did you place me here to do such and such? Why did you have the upbringing that you did? You see, why me? How come other people didn't go through half as much as you did. Why does it seem that nobody else had the same challenges as you did? Why did your friend have better parents and had more stuff than you had? They had better clothes. They had the bikes. They had, you know, the Xboxes for this generation. They had the, you know, the expensive sneakers. And you, know, you don't realize what those parents went through to get those children that stuff. And you know something? When we are content with what we have, the stuff does not matter. However, that is something that's very difficult to get into the eyes and the ears of the children of this generation because everybody has it. And if they don't have it, they are the outcast. And so what we must do is bring them up with a balanced life letting them know that everything that somebody else has may not necessarily be for you. Remember the old saying, don't let the Joneses get you down. And I think that that's appropriate for the generation in which we live. You see, and also, let me give you one more why me. <laughs> because we can look at the world and we can say, why does living a moral and ethical life often seem to be a road less traveled and people who are morally and ethically corrupt, they seem to have a life of Riley. Why does it seem like the people who have no regard for God, no regard for life, no regard for morality, why does it seem like they continue to prosper? Well, we've got the scriptures in the Psalms that says, don't be envious of those evil doers who prosper in their way, because they are still going to come face to face with their God. And so when it comes to these questions, why me? You know, there's no quick or easy answer. And you must never think that having problems in your life is unique 
or that everyone else has it better than you do. You are not the only one that has gone through what you're going through, and you won't be the last. Some of your friends, your classmates, and coworkers, they go home to abusive situations after putting on a facade all day long that says everything is great. After hearing your story, how you made it through, how you beat drugs, sex, gambling, and alcohol addictions, how you got out of your abusive situation, they really long to be like you, but they don't know how to get out. Yet you walk around with the scars of your past that does not allow you to celebrate the victory that you currently enjoy because you're looking at the outward appearance of somebody else that has learned how to hide all of their dilemmas, all of their fears, all of their hurts, and all of their pain. And while some people fail at this point, they never get out of the mental trap that they find themselves in. Other people excel because they viewed what they went through as a trial. And that trial as a doorway into a new dimension of their life. And what I found is that what sets you apart is the mentality or the attitude that you exhibit when you go through your challenges. What sets you apart is the fact that those challenging situations did not destroy you. And if you allow them to, they'll make you stronger. They'll make you better. They'll make you wiser. And they'll make you more godlike. And what set you apart is the fact that although those tribulations were meant to ruin you, you didn't falter, you didn't fold, and you didn't fail. And you're still standing because of the grace of God on your life. You see, your challenge is what they actually do. If you have the right uh, mentality, if you have the right frame of mind, they mold and shape your thinking processes. And they reveal a strength that you have that is only discovered through testing. God is always developing your potential. And as, as such, your mental fortitude is strengthened as you bear up under the pressures of life. Therefore, challenges, they actually shape your future. And they shape the future in a way that God has already prepared for you. You see, challenges give you determination. And determination means that you're just going to keep persevering. And in the end, they make your life better. And afterwards, they affect your children and those entrusted to your care as well. And this is done in a positive or negative fashion. And it's up to you to portray which fashion you're going to portray. As I end, understand this, your words and your actions towards children and specifically your children in their formative years and affirming the people in your life as they get older affects them for years to come. You see, this is why you can't put them down. This is why you can't tell them that they're dumb, they're stupid, they're awkward. They're just like they're no good father or no good mother. You can't tell them that they won't amount to anything, you, that they will never succeed in life, that they better not go to college because they're going to fail, that they won't be successful in business or, you know, or they won't get a better job or promotion in the job that they're in. Understand, we've got to build one another up especially our children. Don't send your children to school hollering at them and screaming at them. Don't send your children to church hollering at them and screaming at them. And here's another one. Don't use your pastor as the bully in that child's life. Whereas you'll say, if you don't do right, I'm going to tell the pastor on you. That's not our job. I've heard it said, and it hurts me. Because I love those children. I love the parents. I love the aunts, the uncles, the moms, the dad, and the grandparents. And the thing is, I never want to be used as the bad guy in their life. Don't substitute the authority that God gave somebody else, you know, as a way for you to get out of your own responsibility as a parent. 
You see, you can't tell them they won't amount to anything. They will never succeed in life, that they better not go to college, you know, and expect them to be successful. Expect them to have a great attitude towards life. You see, this is also why you can't punish your children without a just cause. You can't use your children as punching bags because you're mad at someone else, whether or not it's your mom, their dad, or your boss. Don't take it out on your children. One of the things, when my, when my, uh, my, my daughters were young, and hopefully they won't mind me sharing this, they knew that I never did any type of discipline without sitting them down, without talking to them, and letting them know why. And I also never did anything to them without, first of all, explaining to them that that action was wrong and giving them another chance. But the moment I said, if you do it again, I'm going to have to discipline you. I was bound by my words and I had to discipline them. Now notice discipline, not abuse. The Bible is very, very clear. He who disciplines his children loves them. I only did it because I love them and I never put my hands on them without, I'm going to use the term just cause. You see, we're in their lives to help them develop physically, mentally, socially, economically, and most importantly, spiritually. And when you do this positively, you're not only preserving them, but you're preserving your seed or your family line through them and through your grandchildren. Through them, you're preserving your seed for generations to come because they will replicate the behavior that they receive from you. So with that said, understand you know, that God has a plan for you that only you can accomplish. And you must celebrate who you are. And as you become who you are, you're better able to relate to those that God has put in your path. And so we're going to pick up here next week because I've been referring to what I've been calling a moral compass. This moral compass is critical for us. And next week, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about what the moral compass is. And I already said it's the word of God and how we're supposed to use that in our lives. It's important for you to know, but most important for you to line your life up with it. Because without a moral compass, you're open to any thoughts, anything that could come down the pike. So with that, know that you're loved. God bless you. We will see you next week. I'm praying for you. And I know that God has great things in store for your life. God. Bless you.